Hey, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Jake Williams from Edition InfoSec here. Wanted to chat a little bit about some vigilantes or apparent vigilantes um, that are removing malware uh, that's part of a uh, part of a botnet. Uh, really, really interesting here um, because uh, it turns out that uh, not only um, are these, uh, whoever this, this individual or group is that's removing this malware, uh, not only are they removing it, but they're leaving a helpful message behind um, asking to install your antivirus software, install antivirus software in general and update a computer. Um, there's some theory uh, here that this isn't a uh, uh, basically isn't a vigilante that it's more of a uh, basically more of a uh, competition between uh, multiple botnet operators uh, certainly uh, botnets uh, have been taken over in the past and this one has uh, demonstrated some poor security <clears throat> in the past uh, if you want to read uh, the original article, um, of course, uh, I will uh, post this, uh, the article from ZDNet, uh, Catalan uh, Simpanu, I think, I'm butchering the name here, my apologies, um, Campus Cody on Twitter, uh, of course, I'll post the article in a link uh, beneath the video. Uh, but that said, <clears throat> super interesting here with the Trick Botnet, um, we, we've seen Trick Bot uh, in the past here, um, and uh, wow, uh, that has been a, been a thing. Um, you know, along with that uh, that botnet, uh, again, it has been insecure. They've done a lot of things insecurely in the past, and um, you know, there's a lot of folks that think this is a hijack. Well, that said, uh, you know, hey, that that's that's another topic uh, for for another day. I'm really interested in knowing what people think about um, potential vigilante actions. So a couple hours ago, uh, posted a uh, basically posted this uh, this tweet and said, hey, what do you think about an installing malware or running? Uh, you know, basically running your own benign code, or, right, is someone not going far enough, right? Uh, should they be installing antivirus um, and, uh, or alerting the user in a more, uh, I don't know, gosh, a, a, a different a different way, right? Um, or should you, <clears throat> maybe they went too far with uh, popping the warning banner, maybe they should have simply uninstalled the malware. Um, I think one could confirm, or sorry, one could confirm, one could uh, reasonably assess uh, that a, a user, short of a honeypot uh, type user, um, you know, that uh, basically that has malware on their machine probably doesn't want it there. And I think that that's a reasonable, uh, I think it's a reasonable assertion uh, that they probably don't want the malware, that they probably don't know that it's there. And so simply removing it, right? Um, again, absent my security researchers, honeypot folks, etc. cetera, um, you know, if you remove it, do you really need to pop a message up there and say, hey, you were pwned, but now you're not? I uh, don't know. Um, anyway, uh, bottom line here, I uh, wanted to walk through a couple of the uh, couple of the responses. Um, and uh, you know, I uh, you know, uh, Hexa says a great uh, uh, great uh, point here. Um, <clears throat> you know, basically that uh, if somebody cleaned uh, one of her honeypots, she'd be annoyed. Uh, me too, uh, as it turns out. Uh, no, no question there, right? Um, you know, here we, we get to the uh, it's still unauthorized access, right? You don't know what's on those systems, right? Now, I talk to some folks that are, you know, occasionally they're like, but if I could take over a botnet, right, shouldn't I do that and, and delete uh, delete the malware? Well, uh, maybe, right? Uh, you know, uh, maybe that is a an unwise scenario, right? Uh, and, and I think that, uh, you know, my personal take on this is that, you know, from a liability side, I sure don't want to be involved in any of that, right? Because it's clear that there's significant liability attached um, to running your own code, whatever that is, even if it's just an uninstaller, right? Um, I, I, I might be a little bit more, uh, uh, might be a little bit more prone to, let's say, for instance, that you had access um, to a botnet command and control panel, and you could merely click the uninstall button uh, across millions of hosts or whatever the case is. Eh, there, I, I'm a little bit more prone to be like. Okay, of course, then again, we don't know what that does, right? We don't know whether or not the uninstall action itself, um, you know, might cause a, a more significant, um, uh, some more significant damage. Um, again, th there's too many unknowns here. And, and I think that that's what, uh, what Matt is getting to here. Um, it's still unauthorized access. We don't know if they're running something critical. And even though this, this pop-up appears to be benign, um, and uh, let's say, for instance, that you've tested it, let's say it is 100% benign, you wrote it, it is, we know it's benign, right? Does the fact that you're deploying it um, somehow, maybe that kicks over some process limit or something. Now, granted, you could argue, well, the malware could also make this, make you know, make a box fall over, some critical process fall over, right? But, but again, you weren't involved in that, right? And so as a researcher taking that on, I, I can totally see that. Um, <clears throat> And, and Nick mentions here he had a system brick itself once uh, because the latest patch is incompatible with custom drivers that you wrote for some custom hardware. And obviously, if somebody tries to take that action, again, understanding that this is a machine, right? We're starting from the point of a machine that's already infected. And yes, 100% 
the malware author could trigger far worse than a simple pop-up. Understand, of course, I, I really kind of look at this like a trolley problem, right? And if you're not familiar with the trolley problem, you totally should be. Um, there's there's infinite variations of this, but but at its core, the trolley problem is basically this, right? So you uh, basically are standing uh, at a switch, um, basically a, a train switch, right? And you have the trolley, this train um, that is uh, rolling down the track, and suppose that on one branch of the track, there are five people tied to the track that will absolutely be killed um, if you do nothing. Um, if you throw the switch, right, um, there will be one person killed, right? Um, and uh, here, uh, I look at this as really a an elaborate version of the uh, elaborate version of the trolley problem, right? Um, you know, here uh, if you do nothing, uh, these machines. Supposing you have the access to do it, if you do nothing, these machines continue uh, to be infected, right? Um, if you do something, assuming that there's no ill intent, right? If you do something, um, you have now the possibility of causing harm, right? Um, now, without that, uh, now one can argue, right, that the the possibility of causing harm, some very very small possibility because right? now we're in a variation of the trolley problem where you don't automatically kill somebody there's just a possibility that you kill somebody or or you know I heard a process here the somebody here is the are, are these critical machines that might fall over running critical processes um, yet somehow very uh, uh, yet somehow very uh, what, what do you call that they're very uh, uh, fragile right that uh, may fall over um, certainly here um, certainly here yeah um, I, I, uh, I man I'm not a big fan of that, right? Uh, so definitely I don't want somebody to patch for me. Um, removing malware, uh, adding a notice, uh, Nick's kind of like, eh, that's probably not a big deal. I I'm totally down with that, right? Um, I, I mean, I, I see where he's coming from there, differentiating between removing the malware versus the installing an update. Now, we definitely, uh, you know, from an installing an update standpoint, that would 100% for me be a bridge too far in any hypothetical scenario. Uh, I, I have seen tons of machines get uh, get burned uh, simply through installing a, a bad update, right? Um, I like uh, Ricky Williams uh, notes the uh, uh, so basically computer Batman uh, the hero we deserve but not the one we need right now. Uh, interesting take there, uh, you know, and, and obviously a throwback to Batman. Uh, reasonably, uh, reasonably interesting. Um, you know, <clears throat> uh, Rob uh, says uh, that he joked about malware that did that years ago. Um, he said that we worked out that you could install Trial AV. Uh, you know, basically with warnings, etc., um, and get paid if if they bought a uh, bought a license, right? Um, and uh, you know, basically the uh, he would then have the money go to charity, um, and uh, then ultimately decided AV was also malware. Lol. Um, you know, I uh, right. So so this one's actually really interesting. I definitely can't get behind installing antivirus because that hooks all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, the, the point about it being also malware is is probably a uh, probably a throwback to that or a, a uh, kind of a nod to that. Uh, AV hooks all over the place and uh, when AV um, does those hooking or performs those hooking operations, um, AV may uh, cause a uh, cause some kind of in, uh, incompatibility there that may cause uh, system operational issues, right? Um, and uh, here uh, Redbeard Ninja says, I guess not all heroes wear capes. Um, and uh, yeah, here uh, Robin Jackson says, hey, same thing happened with Conficker and the researcher was pummeled by the community, if you remember correctly. And the answer there is 100% uh, yes. Um, that is definitely the way that one, uh, the way that one played out, right? Um, and uh, here um, says, hey, probably an endless discussion. Uh, Ralph uh, says, in which cases do you need antivirus software and which not? Um, seems to be uh, seems not to be clear for every case, or is it? No, it's not. Uh, we have a lot of customers that don't run antivirus in specific uh, specific scenarios, um, and and there's good reason for that. I think, right? Uh, you know, there there are good reasons uh, for some critical systems, some real time uh, slash critical systems, not to uh, not to run antivirus and 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 rock on. Yeah, 100. percent You don't get to make that decision. Right, I, I think that's the uh, that's a big key there. Um, we shouldn't be making that decision uh, for a uh, you know basically as a researcher for a third party. Um, we shouldn't be making the decision at all, right? Um, and, and here, uh, Lion of Cybersecurity um, says, "In for a penny, in for a pound." Given the meme, uh, I'm going to guess here that that was uh, kind of uh, kind of joking. Remember, the original question was uh, really back to the: Are they going far enough? Um, or maybe uh, you know maybe they're going too far, right? Um, and I'll close here with, with my 100%. Uh, kind of thought around this. Um, unauthorized access is unauthorized access, says Adrian, but if you're doing it as a vigilante, you might as well go uh, go do the whole hog. Um, and uh, here, uh, Brennan says, wasn't that the original definition of a gray hat? Yeah, 
maybe. I don't think that's quite the original definition of a gray hat, but but I'll, I'll work with you there. Um, sure, but if I detect any unauthorized access, says Simon, I'm going to burn that host to the ground and rebuild fresh. Uh, yeah, I mean, fair, right? Uh, of course, the key point here is that uh, demonstrably they didn't detect unauthorized access. Uh, short of those honeypot scenarios, that's why the malware was still running, right? Uh, Ronnie uh, says uh, not all heroes wear capes, uh, so apparently uh, saying that, or apparently inferring um, that uh, some of these, uh, basically that these users are being helped or these uh, victims are being helped here. Um, and then if we roll forward a little bit, uh, Moxie says trying to remember the XP exploit that had a rogue good guy uh, going around and patching. Um, and uh, yeah, I look, again, you know, applying a patch can cause a lot of issues. I 100% cannot get behind um, applying a patch, right? Um, and, uh, you know, here, uh, Gimel3 uh, says that uh, base or GIML3 or GIM13, uh, I can't tell if it's an L or a 3, it looks like Gimel3, uh, says uh, just as illegal as the malware install itself. Ethically, it's bad, as, bad at best um, as it's maybe a net positive uh, yet you have to violate written consent to complete the action. Two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah. Okay. Look. Uh, kind of run through some of the responses here. Just a couple hours into this, uh, a couple hours into this tweet. Um, he here's my my personal opinion on this. Uh, personal nothing. Uh, give me my professional opinion first, uh, followed by the personal. The professional opinion is from a liability standpoint, um, this is absolutely unacceptable. Right. So um, th there's a reason that uh, you know big research companies, um, you know, don't uh, or big information security companies don't go and start patching. Uh, slash removing malware on systems, even though a lot of them can, right? There's a big reason they don't do this. Um, you know, obviously there's the whole intelligence collection if they've infiltrated a botnet uh, somehow, or uh, they've, they've got honeypots running slash can monitor command and control, et cetera. Um, you know, that they, they value that intelligence gain um, also, from a liability standpoint, they, they just can't afford to do it, right? Uh, again, one thing goes wrong somewhere, and it doesn't actually matter whether or not, uh, yeah, probably worth mentioning, it doesn't really matter whether or not you actually cause any destructive action. Um, you can still incur significant costs if someone alleges that you uh, conducted some, uh, you know, basically, or, or conducted uh, this operation, um, and then cause some uh, some adverse uh, adverse action to occur. And so, just knowing that, knowing that someone can allege and say, "Hey, like, let's say, for instance, that rendition did this, right? We absolutely did not, right? But let's say that we did. Um, you know, someone could infer that rendition." had caused harm and we would have to then spend uh, or expend resources in, in the term or in this case in the context of legal fees trying to defend that assertion that we had <clears throat> um, you know that assertion um, that we had caused damage obviously we don't want to be in that position right um, so here you know here we sit uh, again fo folks are not going to uh, by and large do this and and there's again just lots of good reasons for this uh, secondarily you know I've kind of kicked around the hypothetical of just doing this um, you know, might cause uh, some damage, and if it did, liability attached. But the reality is that, that it absolutely could uh, could cause damage. Um, and uh, I, I mean, what do you do there, right? And I think the answer is um, you let well enough uh, let well enough alone. Uh, from an ethical standpoint, if you wanted to notify victims, right? Certainly, you could do that, right? That that could be a uh, that could be a possibility. From a personal side, I get it. All right, I, that, that's probably what I'll say. From a personal side, I get it. I get the desire to do this. Again, I'm assuming that this isn't uh, two rival botnets, um, you know, two rival botnets fighting it out, right? Um, but uh, but it could be, uh, you know, if it is, then then granted, this takes on a whole new look, right? But I'm assuming here for the moment, and for the sake of the ethical discussion, right, that it really is a vigilante action. And, and if it is, I totally get it. I get the desire to make the world safer uh, from a personal standpoint. Um, not really interested in, uh, yeah, not really interested in going to jail. So, uh, um, you know, knowing that I'm, I'm now exceeding uh, authorization um, and uh, would now have unauthorized access, again, this could probably be prosecuted under the CFAA, um, although the big challenge there would be demonstrating damage. Um, although, you know, there's a pretty fine line, right? Uh, 5K is, is, is pretty much the damage line, right? Um, and so $5,000 is the damage line. It is trivial. I mean, just to, just to get there, right? It's, it's a super trivial thing to, to do. So, um, so, so from that perspective, I'd be a little bit less prone uh, to want to, honestly, I'd be a little bit less prone to want to, to want to do anything personally there as well, just knowing the risk. And, and so, so I get it, 
totally understand, right? Um, but uh, you know, again, this is not something that we as information security professionals uh, or, or even even information security vigilantes, right? Knowing that you can cause that damage, uh, you, you should probably avoid this even at a personal level. So, so that's kind of where I weigh in at it. Um, and I absolutely would not um, you know, ask the question here as a uh, kind of a, hey, I'm interested to know where other people in the community are at. Um, but uh, you know, for, for me, I, I just can't support this kind of action. Again, personally, I get it. I just can't support it. The precedent is, uh, you know, is, is is pretty extreme. And, and I mentioned before, even uninstalling a piece of malware. Um, you know, I mentioned antivirus hooks. A lot of malware hooks as well. And, and a hook basically is redirecting code flow. To uninstall that malware, you have to remove those hooks. Removal of hooks can cause uh, system instability as well. Um, you know, obviously, if you're cleaning with antivirus, right? Uh, cleaning an infected system with antivirus. There, you have the opportunity to remove those hooks uh, through a reboot. Um, you know, and and uh, that, that's a whole separate, uh, you know, a whole separate thing there. Uh, you have planned downtime, right, um, or, or planned scan or something around that as opposed to somebody else uh, coming in and, and basically taking the action for you, right? So that's, a, that's where I'm going to leave it. And I'm just going to say that, uh, again, not behind this action, um, although uh, not behind this action, although I, I totally get it, totally understand. Um, anyway. Uh, done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this one out here. Uh, Jake Williams for Nutrition InfoSec, signing off.